All right, then we are now celebrating on Victory Monday because the Washington football team has become the champions of the NFC East, which um, is pretty interesting based on everything that happened this year. This was probably the most tumultuous year that the uh, the franchise has had. Um, and uh, probably starting out oh, within the off season, there was the um, change of the name, which we addressed in a previous video. And I talked about the Steelers. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit later as well as a part of this whole story that I believe has been unfolding uh, with uh, the Washington football team being a parable of what's happening in Washington, D.C. Uh, so the name change uh, as it relates to the racism issues. Uh, and then there was a sexual misconduct a scandal that came out um, in relation to the management in the team. And then you had uh, actually Coach Rivera uh, contracting cancer and having to go through that in the off season and, and go through the treatments. Uh, and then once the season started, um, despite winning the first game, they really uh, did poorly and several quarterback changes ha happened. We had four total quarterbacks played this year. Um, and then the number one, our first round pick that they had from two years ago, Dwayne Haskins was cut um, after some bad decisions off the field and poor play on the field. And so uh, well, just a lot going on. Um, obviously the overarching issue of the year uh, had been the pandemic, which affected everybody on some level uh, playing sports and in life in general. So all this took place um, and they ended up beating last night, the Philadelphia Eagles 2014. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that final score um, may always like when there's this symbolism going on, I'm thinking about, oh, is there a scripture that, you know, will help kind of speak into what's happening. Um, and so I, I looked around, but um, the first several scriptures I, I found that were 2014 were actually kind of funny because they had nothing to do with it and it sounded terrible. <laughs> it, would, it didn't relate in any way. Um, <clears throat> and you know, they were just like out, totally out of context and, and there was nothing um, that you could connect to any kind of message. Uh, but we'll get to what I eventually landed on, which was one of the last things that I saw. Obviously, it was the last thing because from there I felt like that was what was being said. So, just to kind of capital uh, say, yeah, we got the NFC East champions here, but they finished their record seven and nine. And so, I think the symbolism that you can see there is the seven wins. Uh, while that's an unusual win uh, rec a record for someone going to the playoffs, it's not unprecedented. It's happened before, but you have that seven, which indicates God's completion and perfection and what's going to be happening what has happened in 2020 he will complete what he what he started and nine is a number of judgment and i believe that's the loss column so we're looking at the judgment that's coming to those that have that are losing in this season as far as like the losers all right um so the first win of the year was against philadelphia and the last one was also philadelphia so i think god's saying over dc in america uh that he is overcoming all that fraud that took took place there uh, in this case it's not just uh, it's just a symbolism here but philadelphia will represent false prophets of Baal or media declaring victory where there is none so you got a couple things eagles in general often um, will represent the prophetic but uh, since they're the enemy <laughs> um, just in this moment just for this uh, um, story here um, they're the ones that are prophesying uh, or symbolize the ones that are prophesying things that are not true um, and so the other thing that happened this year is that um, the Giants were the only team in their division that beat the Washington both times. So Washington won twice against Dallas and the Eagles. That really helped them obviously become the, the division champions. So the Giants, um, if the Washington would not have won, they would have won the division. So indirectly, they did beat them. Uh, so the, the thing here is that the giants in the land, quote unquote, have won some battles, but then in the end, they will lose the war. Um, it's just a little play on words with David, right? Uh, and the many battles he took on with giants. Uh, once again, we've mentioned the Steelers in the past. That was their signature win of the year. At that time, they were undefeated. And it's, so there is a surprising victory over the Steelers that not only happened for the team, but is happening uh, in relation to the election 
So there's a big movement and stop the steal that's been going on for quite some time. And this week is very pivotal um, in what's happening through the election and all that's been going on. Uh, there's, I've heard there's just a um, mass amount of people heading to DC this week. Uh, and some of that is in relation or might be all of it. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm not up on it because I don't pay attention to the news. I just hear some things from other sources. Uh, so I know that there is a movement though, people saying, um, you know, we're, we want the truth to come out. And um, so, yeah, so that God is extraordinary. Ex um, so that win was one of three wins against the Steelers and then the two against the Eagles. So there's three wins from Pennsylvania teams. So God's orchestrating victory in that pivotal state. So four times in the 2020 season, Washington scored 20 points and then the, their opponents scored 23 times. So that's a, that's a seven, uh, seven total scores in uh, that would have been seven games that, um, that there was a 20 score. So there again is that number of perfection and completion. So God is perfecting and completing his agenda for 2020, no matter what wins and losses have happened. So some of those were wins, some of those were losses, right? Um, so back to the 2014. So like I said, I went through this whole thing of looking for scripture. I had Isaiah popped in my head at first and that didn't make any sense. I didn't go there. And then, um, and then eventually, um, I found second Chronicles 20, which if you've been paying attention at all, oh, I wish I could type here. Um, my voice obviously is not normal because I've had a sore throat, but, uh, I should have this pulled up already, but sorry people second chronicles so second chronicles 20 might be familiar to you this year especially in 2020 because it was used um and i didn't type in the 20 part so let's just go here although it's not the fastest way to get there but when you're not prepared beforehand you have to do it the silly way it's not easy. I guess I could have typed it in again, but right now we get to go scroll through Chronicles, which is exciting. All right, so second Chronicles 20, and I went too far. So um, for those that have been paying attention to the prophetic voices, the second Chronicles 20, 20 was very uh, repeated verse because it basically says, believe the word of God, you'll be established, believe the word of the prophets and you will prosper. And so 2014 popped up for me eventually in my little search. And so what we have here um, in verse 14 is um, the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite, and the, son, and the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. So that's the verse. Uh, this is Jehaziel is the guy that were referred later is referred to, you know, believe the prophet. So he gave this prophetic word over the nation, uh, over the people of Judah. And um, later the king Jehoshaphat says, believe God, believe the prophets, and things are going to work out basically. So that's where this starts, right? Well, this whole thing I think is a picture of what we've encountered this year, last year, what's happening currently. Uh, so verse 15, 15 says, and he said, listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the valley, east of the wilderness of Jeruel. Jeruel, however you want to say that. You will not need you will not need to fight in this battle stand firm hold your position and see the salvation of the lord on your behalf O judah and jerusalem do not be afraid and do not be dismayed tomorrow go out against them and the lord will be with you then jehoshaphat the king bowed his face ahead with his face to the ground and all judah and inhabitants of jerusalem fell down before the lord worshiping him and the levites and the Kothrites, the Kothrites stood up praise the lord got to be with a very loud voice so there's this judah is praising judah means praise they're praising because what god said about the victory happening and here's verse 20 the one that uh aforementioned that has been a 2020 verse hear me O judah inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god and you'll be established believe in his prophets and you will succeed and so we're now we're moving into what happens after you believe in the prophets and believe what God is saying, right? And 
in verse 21, it says, when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire as they went before the army. And they, and they said, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. So what you see here is Judah, the people of praise, are going out in war before the army with praise. They're in holy attire. So it's giving us a picture of what we're to be as followers of Christ, you know, living a holy life and a life full of praise. And then our song for this year and can be for any year, right? Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. So that's really what our position should be in 2021. And then I even believe that 2022 is verse 22. And so as this continue to unfold, what's happened in 2020, what's happened this year, and what will continue to go for is that the Lord is setting an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, the people of God, the people who praise. And then they were routed. So God routes the enemy. And then 23 even goes farther to say, to say that the enemy turns on himself and they destroy one another. So I think that's going to show a picture of what's going to eventually happen through everything that's taken place. Um, and so Washington football and what's happened um, is, I think, just a little picture of all this, right? Um, uh, and the other thing, uh, as you would go back to the, I think it's interesting that in verse 14, you get the lineage of Jehaziel. Um, and I believe that this is a roadmap of what God is doing in our midst at this time. So Jehaziel means beheld of God. Then you have Zechariah meaning Jehovah remembers. And then uh, Beniah is Jehovah built. And Jael is Jehovah sweeps away. And then Mataniah is gift of Jehovah. So God, I think he's looking for people that know that God is enamored with them. Like you're being beheld, beheld by God. And he remembers us. And he's building a church and a people that nothing can defeat, that gates of hell cannot prevail against. He's sweeping away the enemy, and now he's going to be delivering a gift to us, which I believe is a promise of his glory, filling the earth like never before. Um, so that's what I think uh, is happening there. Uh, and just the passage also, that whole scripture from 14 to 20 to 23, right in the middle there, it talks about the battle is the Lord's. What we have to do is just stand. We're not actually hand-to-hand -hand combating or anything of that nature. We're just going to see God's salvation come. And like I said, verse 21 is this year's declaration. Give thanks to the Lord for steadfast love endures forever. And then there's a sneak peek, like I said, into next year and beyond. I think there's going to be complete routing of the enemy. And they're continually going to be turning on each other, destroying them one another. Um, but complete victory is coming. I wanted to bring out a couple of other things that I thought were interesting. Uh, this battle in the Old Testament um, you're going to see that um, it's in the valley of Jeruel, which is that word actually means the Lord is training you. So that this has been a time of training for the church and, and individuals in the wilderness, right? In a difficult time. Um, so 2020, if you add those numbers together, you get 40. 40 is, is a wilderness a symbolic number, number. You get the wilderness 40 years in the wilderness for the Israelites, 40 days in the wilderness for Jesus before his ministry. So it's always like this time of preparation of people's hearts for what they're actually meant to walk into. And so um, you see that in the valley, the east of the wilderness of Jeruel, um, there's another wilderness moment that we've gone through as a world and nation. And now God uh, has prepared our hearts to be able to stand firm, hold our position and see the salvation of the Lord on our behalf. So that's um, a little of my interpretation of uh, contemporary events that are happening. And obviously Washington football team, you know, it's, it is just football, but I believe if we have an eye to see and an ear to hear, we can pick up what God is seeing through many different avenues. Obviously, you, we always start with God's word as the foundation for uh, how we hear and interpret what things happen. Um, and uh, so I hope that um, as we're moving into this week and all the things that are happening on a national level that 
first and foremost, we stand and we put our trust in the Lord. And uh, like it says in here, we're going to give thanks because his steadfast love endures forever. All right. Thanks.